I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today I'm going to be talking about a couple things. One, we have an upcoming live event that if I time this right, you're going to be able to watch tomorrow. But you got to put a little bit of effort on this, not too much. But I'm going to put all the links and stuff. We're going to talk about that as soon as we're back. We're also going to talk a little bit about the whole idea of owning things uh, and how that might change and how it changed for me when I moved to Nicaragua, just when I moved to Central America in general, I think that it's something that will apply to a lot of people that you don't think it's going to apply to you. And of course I could be wrong, but I think it might. We're gonna talk about that right after the bump. It's an absolutely gorgeous afternoon here in Leon, Nicaragua. We got the Bougainvillea behind me. I love these. I do want to point out, this is a hikaro tree. And what it actually is, is uh, the main tree is hikaro. And then there's Bougainvillea, which is kind of a symbiotic tree. It can grow on its own, but it's kind of a vine. In this case, it's grown into the hikaro and taken over. So it's like a giant Bougainvillea tree. It's just this explosion of color all the time. This is not like just this time of year. It happens all the time. It is so beautiful. And the hikaro has these hard little fruit that fall down. The dogs like to chase them. They're basically like baseballs falling out of the tree. You gotta be careful. If they hit you on the head, it's gonna hurt. The bougainvillea creates this luscious color. And then pataya or dragon fruit grows throughout this tree as well. So this is a triple uh, plant going on there. And this is this is just in our garden, uh, but it, I don't talk about it very much. And people are always like, what kind of tree is that? Because it doesn't fit any description. It's because there's a cactus, a vine and a tree all living symbiotically together in one thing. And, there, and we have two of them. This is just the, the one. It's wild that you're able to do this. And boy, does it turn into a beautiful combination. We do not, I know people are gonna ask, we have not harvested any dragon fruit out of the tree. I have no idea how you do that. I don't know what conditions need to happen for you to get that, I just don't know. So we haven't done that. We get a ton of mango here. We get cashews. We don't really pick those ourselves. We get avocado. We get a lot of things, coconuts all the time. The dogs are constantly eating coconuts and, and mango. So we get a lot of fruit. We don't need to worry about dragon fruit. It's easy enough to get at the market. I just have no idea. And we probably have to climb up in the tree and get it. So not getting involved with that. So my big news is that uh, we should be airing this on Monday afternoon. On Tuesday morning uh, at eight o'clock, Central America time, that is, so we're currently at uh, UTC minus six, but we're always at UTC minus six, uh, but that means that we are in line with the United States because the United States is on daylight savings right now because it's summer. So we are in line with mountain time during this time of the year. So that is 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. American Central, and at 8 a.m. American Mountain time, or at 8 a.m. Central America time, which is all of Central America except for uh, Panama, the uh, I am going to be live on Nicaragua Channel 8. I don't know exactly what time segment they're going to get me in. That is the morning show there. So you just have to start watching and uh, see what happens. It is going to be in Spanish. I've done Channel 6 morning show a year ago in Spanish, and that worked out pretty well. Fingers crossed that I'm able to do this one in Spanish this time. I feel like I'm a little bit more nervous about it because I've been here longer. So I'm just expected to speak Spanish better. We'll see. But uh, I know a lot of you are like, I want to see you speak Spanish. That's not why is that not a thing? You got to get on and we want to hear you do a show in Spanish. Well, I have. You, you, Some of you have seen it on Channel 6. A lot of you now can see it on Channel 8. So that is my announcement. I will do my best to have links below. I will do my best to do a community post shortly before it begins so you have a current thing to go click on. I'm going to do everything I can to get the word out but I'm going to be in Managua. Um, I have to get there on Monday night. Tonight, uh, I have to spend the night, get up, go really early, be out at the, st the studio. Uh, it's just a lot to do. It's a lot of fun on Channel 6 on the morning show a year ago. Great time, really interesting. It was not my first time on TV. It was definitely my first time doing a morning show or being on in Spanish. Like, that was completely wild, uh, but looking forward to doing that again. We're going to be talking about this vlog. This vlog is why we're on the show. Like this is the same as last time. Uh, this vlog has gotten so big though, that it really does get a lot of attention and they find it very interesting. People want to hear about what work we're doing here and what kind of audience we have. So like literally we're going to be talking about you guys. How cool is that, that you can go watch me live on channel eight talking about you. That's pretty cool. So join me for that. The more of you that join and they see those people joining, the more it encourages them to put me on the show. So that's fantastic. It also does a lot to get the word out in country uh, about the show because a lot of people are not necessarily aware because we do it in English and obviously not a lot of English speakers here. 
So that's very good as well. We're also going to be talking, I hope, the plan is that we're going to be talking about Nicarumba, which for those who don't follow too closely, this is not a big deal for those who haven't come to Nicaragua, but if you're here or visiting or planning on visiting or you're going to move, whatever, uh, nicarumba.com. So it's a page that handles events of all sorts, especially music concerts and uh, festival events, parades, any number of things. It's a place to go check out what's going on. If there's going to be a, uh, a, a you know, theater show or anything of the sort, that's a place you can listen. And it's completely free for people to list. And it's completely free for venues like restaurants, bars, uh, concert halls, whatever, to list the events that they have. And so pretty soon, and maybe even by the time that we are on TV, you're going to be able to sign in and follow those things. Currently, you just list them, uh, but we're working really hard on getting it to a point where people can actually make accounts and follow bands or venues that you like so that you can be like, well, I only go watch this band. I want to know every time they're going somewhere, or I only go to this one place because it's around the corner, but I want to know who's there and I want to get updates. Like all that is, uh, uh, is going to be built in and it's all completely free. It's free for bands. It's free for end users. It's free for, it's just free. So very very cool. If you haven't checked that out, please just take a look. Give some feedback. We'd love to hear about it. We do have a lot of people use it all the time. If if anything's missing, we hear immediately. It's really cool how busy that's got. But this is the first time we're going to be talking about it on television. So this is really going to be getting the word out about Nicarumba in country. In my vlog, people are interested. Like, that's cool that you have a vlog. That's kind of the end of it. But when we do uh, this, this should be a, this is a thing that people can really go use right now. Really do it in a very tactical sense. We're excited about that. So that's what's going on April 30th, Tuesday, 8 a.m. Mountain Time or Central America Time, 9 o'clock Central U.S. Time, 10 o'clock Eastern U.S. Time. In the morning, it's the morning show live Go check it out and watch me. I would really appreciate the support. And we're not doing, we didn't do a live show this past week because I'm super busy. And uh, the live show day was on my daughter Luchana's uh, 13th birthday. So we're spending the day celebrating with her uh, instead of doing the live show, which she very much appreciates that we took the time off to do that. Okay, that was a lot of just status updates about the show, but it's a big deal. Like the show is getting more attention and that's thanks to all of you. So thank you uh, for helping make all of this possible from your participation and viewership. And before we go on to today's segment, I just want to remind everyone, because I don't say this enough, thank you, first of all. But second, get down in the comments and say hi. Uh, but two, if you have questions, if you have ideas, if you have things that you want to know about, ask them away, or even better, all the instructions are down in the in the show description, uh, go and film yourself. It doesn't have to be on a Fuji camera like this. It could be on your cell phone. It could be on a GoPro, whatever's handy, and record yourself. Just make sure the audio is clear. You got some good light, and uh, ask your questions that way. I'd love to put more of you guys on the show. That's so much. It's fun, and I think for the audience, it's really interesting. So really encouraging you guys to do that. I only, Jillian and Andrew and Alan have, have done that so far. So more of you doing that would be fantastic. Okay, so today I wanted to talk about, and I've touched on this before, and it gets mixed into other subjects, but I wanted to talk about uh, kind of consumerism or even materialism and how it has changed for me personally having moved to Central America. Now, for most of you guys, you know, I grew up in the United States. I'm a New Yorker. I spent the most, you know, the first two decades of my life living in New York. I then started moving all over the country and eventually settled in Texas and Dallas specifically. And growing up in the United States, and there's a lot of reasons why this is a good thing. The United States is very consumer driven. It's a, it's a capitalistic economy where manufacturing things, creating things, buying things, selling things, trading things, all those things help drive the economy. They create jobs, they create opportunities. A lot of the American dream is driven by these things. And, and that is itself some value. Like there's some real reasons why America is the way that it is. And, and in a good way, right? Some of that is driven by mass consumerism. And I know that sounds absolutely crazy because there's obviously negatives and we the, the name consumerism has these huge negative connotations. And there are negatives to it, right? If you're buying things you can't afford, that's bad, right? For you, at least. It's good for everyone else. Uh, and so we think of this as this negative, but there are huge positives to it, uh, including the fact that, you know, if you have enough money to afford, let's just say new furniture, you take your old furniture and you donate it or you sell it at lower cost, then people who couldn't afford new furniture are able to get furniture more likely because you're doing that. And then those people who bought your secondhand furniture, which is probably still pretty nice, they can give their old furniture to people who can't afford anything. And sure, they're getting old beat up furniture, but it's better than nothing, right? And, and American consumerism drives that kind of trickle down 
uh, it's not a good term, uh, but trickle down uh, uh, product uh, system and it has a lot of value. Here in Nicaragua, one of the things, we, we rarely see products with that long life cycle where they're going from person to person to person and being able to last through many generations of product, not generations of people, uh, and get that kind of use out of them. Now, of course, a lot of products here are made by hand and do last longer. Like it's, it's a different thing completely, but the United States has this down to a science and has managed to get a lot of really good benefits out of it. But I'm not here to argue for or against consumerism. My point is simply that this is the American culture and I certainly grew up in it. And so my life living in the United States is one of just owning things, all kinds of things. I still own toys from when I was a child. I still own uh, antique cameras and computers from when I was little. I have everything I've ever purchased in my entire life that I didn't bother to donate is still somewhere. I've had storage units even when I had a house to store everything in. Boy, the light's changing a lot as I do this. And you know, just there's always a lot of stuff. And everyone I know is like this. This isn't unique to me. It's not some special thing. This is how life is. We own a lot of things. Everything in life encourages it, including Things like Walmart just having lots of products that are really useful at really low prices that are massively convenient to go get. And Amazon shipping things to your house in a moment, right? Like all these things make it that your answer to so many things is not, I'm going to work around it. It's, well, it's so cheap and simple and fast to buy it. Why wouldn't I not just solve a problem by buying something? And that's fine, right? But it creates a life where you have a storage unit packed to the gills of everything that you realize now you don't need and you can't get into it and it's far away and it's a huge problem, but that's okay. That's just me. So this is something that if you're coming from America or Canada or Western Europe, chances are now the U.S. is more extreme than those other places, but all of them are pretty extreme you probably own a lot of things and you think in a way of owning a lot of things because that's just how we think. Coming to Central America, one of the things that hit me immediately without being super apparent, this is, this is worth mentioning, at no point did I suddenly go, whoa, wait, no one owns things. It wasn't like that. But coming here, a lot of things changed. Now, some of them were we just didn't watch TV. We went like a year with barely turning on a TV. And now when we travel, like we don't turn on, like there's so many times I don't turn on a TV, which is funny for those who know me. I've been doing this project to like collect antique, not antique, but old television shows. Antique is a weird word there. Uh, because I want to have this history of television. I'm going through a lot of old movies with my daughter. And like, so you know, I have kind of a, I use television a bit, but in general, we don't watch very much television here. When we lived in the United States, we watched television a lot. Just by arriving here, we didn't stop and say, okay, now we're not going to watch TV. We didn't do that, right? But really quickly and easily, we just naturally didn't. There was so much more like, well, let's go out and watch a sunset. Let's go outside for a walk. And of course, just being in a new country, there's all these things to do, but there's also live music and there's this lingering over dinner thing that in the United States, you tend to go to dinner, tend, there's exceptions, but you go to Chili's or whatever, and they're gonna, you know, you get your meal and then it's time to go. And then the next person gets your table and five or six people during the night will have that table. But here you go out to an El Vivero, you go to Barbaro, your table for the night is yours. Yeah, if you leave, they'll turn it over if they can. They're not expecting to. It's not really how it works. Now, it's not as extreme as Italy, where they expect you to get there early, wait hours to eat, eat over a period of hours, and then linger for the whole time. And the whole table is yours for the entire night, no matter what. Like, that's even more extreme. But here, it leans more towards that than towards the U.S., that you really do. You go out for dinner and you hang out. You hang out with friends. You hang out with your family. You watch music or, or maybe there's a DJ. Maybe you get up and dance from time to time, but you keep the table. And yeah, you got a meal at some point, but you're just having a few drinks over a long period of time. Everything is different and you tend to go out. So things like TV really become less important without you thinking about it. For most people, of course, everyone's an exception. Someone loves TV so much they're going to get down here and be like, well, th this is just the perfect weather for me to mount a beautiful TV on my wall, turn on the air conditioning, make some popcorn and spend my evening watching TV because that's the thing I like to do. Fantastic. If that's what you like to do, that's a thing you can do here. But for most of us, the, the culture naturally gravitates us away from TV. And likewise, something about the culture, and I'll go into some of the details that I know, and I'm sure there's plenty that I don't, uh, make us gravitate almost instantly away from buying things. You're just not likely to own anywhere near as much stuff when you live here as when you're in the US. Now, some of the reasons that this is true, one, everyone around you is also not buying things. Now, a lot of this is because this is a much poorer country, and so people don't have the disposal, disposable income to simply you know, spend time shopping for fun. They're not gonna look on Amazon and go, wow, 
a new laser pointer. My old laser pointer isn't uh, isn't as cool as this one. I want this. And oh, a new notepad. I did uh, my old notepad is okay, but this one has cats on the cover. I want that. Right? Like you're not likely to just buy things to buy things uh, because it's just shopping as an entertainment form does not exist. I mean, it does, but very, very minimally and almost exclusively in Managua. That's the first thing. The second thing is that the people around you aren't doing it, so you don't have this, well, they're doing it, so I'm going to do it thing. That affects you as well. The encumbrance of trying to do this, it is definitely a lot of effort to go out and go shopping in most cases. Now, if you're looking for shoes or a new dress, it's really easy. There's clothing shops all over even Leon, and if you're in Managua, obviously tons of stuff, but if you're going for other things, you wanna shop for uh, technology components or car parts or just everything, it's very hard. There's replacement parts if you need to fix things, but if you're looking to do something really uh, just, just kind of in a shopping mode, a lot of those things that we are used to just shopping for in other countries, and this is hard to describe, like how do I own so many things in America now that I'm here? It's like, what did I buy when I was there? What was I buying? I have no idea. Right. But I know when I go back and I look at my storage unit, it's insane. And every single item I'm like, oh, yeah, no, at the time that made total sense. And now I'm like, well, that's nuts. Right. So the whole idea of shopping for all these little things really fades away. And it's super important that that changes how you are. Now, of course, if you just love shopping, if you're, you're gonna like, I'm going to make an effort, I'm going to shop and I'm not changing. Fine but you're gonna to have to do things like maybe shop on Amazon in the US and have it shipped down. Maybe you're gonna to learn to shop on Alibaba and send things in from China. Maybe you're gonna put in the effort to drive around Managua and do your shopping. One way or another, you're going to change how you shop, you have to, and if you do those things, then you're probably going to adjust yourself to some degree because the act of shopping is so different and the results cost different, take more time, whatever. When you shop on Amazon in the US and you're like, ah, I'm in, I lived in Dallas, right? Three hour delivery on most normal things. That's amazing, right? I <laughs> love that. But it also meant that every time I turned around, someone said, you know what I'd like? And before they're even done saying it, I'm like, yeah, it'll be here by the time we're done with dinner. Whoa, cool. Like, that's so neat that it, like we never stop marveling over that. Here, every little thing is like, okay, if that's really something you want, let's talk about that. Let's put it on a list. Let's prepare to buy it. And if you still want it in two weeks when we place an order, then yeah, we'll get it. And it'll be here two weeks after that. And, and so it makes you be really thoughtful and really planned. You don't just say, you know what? It's so cheap and easy. I'm just going to grab it and have it come. Even something that's really cheap and easy right? Like I need a $20 part for something that I'm doing. And it's not critical. I'm not, I'm not hindered by not having it, but it will make things work better. I have it on a list. I have a notepad. I'm like, oh, okay, so I'm going to go shopping. This isn't something I can buy around the corner. So I have a list, lists of places. So I'm going to be in Managua. Here's my list for Managua. I'm going to be in the United States. Here's my list for the United States. And that's when I get parts. Oh, and Alan is going to the United States in a couple weeks. And he's like, oh, can I, can I bring anything back that you need? I'm like, yes, I got this $20 item. I'm going to need you to bring that back. And I haven't remembered to tell him that. So if he's watching this episode, this is the reminder, Alan, that I have something that I need you to bring back. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, but like that little kind of thing is like, oh, this part is hard to get here, but I'm really like, do I really want it? Yes. It really makes sense. I've put in thought about it make sure I'm getting the right part, make sure it's waiting for me. When I was in the States recently, I had a uh, new Nikon camera lens sent to my father, had it waiting. So he's able to look at the box. Go, yep, here's a picture of the box. We know we have it. You, you know, I spent time, uh, a long time, making sure I was, I was buying the right thing, getting a good price on it, knowing where to get it, uh, you know, waiting for a used one to come up for it. That's how I do my cameras. Uh, and, and like all of this work, and then I get this reward after waiting a really long time that I'm definitely getting this lens that I really want. And it's definitely going to be really cool. And so far that's worked out fantastic for me because I buy so much less. I'm so much happier with what I get. Each item is so much more thoughtful on my, on my behalf. Uh, but the thing that really changes for me is that suddenly my house is not full of things. I have rooms full of nothing. I have nothing to put into them. Ah, uh, there's some times I'd really like more table space. I'd really like more shelf space so I could lay things out and organize them. Because you guys know I do a lot of these videos and it's like lenses, microphones, batteries, like that stuff gets crazy. And I wish I had a lot more space to make that work more easily. Absolutely, that would be great. But I don't need more batteries. I don't need more cable. Okay, sometimes I need more cables. I don't need like, there's like all these little, I don't need like devices. I need space to put them. I need, you know, places to lay them out. I need room to maneuver, room to plug them in so they can charge. That, no problem. 
but I don't need to keep buying things and my house doesn't fill up with all these little things that I buy. And in fact, I'd say that things go out of the house almost as fast as things come in. We're not seeing a general increase. When we lived in America, there was a constant increase. Maybe it wasn't super fast, but the house always got more packed until we offloaded it to a storage unit and that never got smaller. That just got more and more and more packed and we still have it and we can't even get into it. It's so packed. I think that the entire lack of culture where people would expect you to go out and go shopping and own lots of things, combined with the effort necessary to go get lots of things, and sorry for the weird light today, like I can't figure out how to make this really good. You know what, let's just move. How's that, a little bit better? Now I don't have the weird shadows. Now we're just, and the colors are just, Love it. Okay, so I think the combination of it being such high effort to go shopping and the time you have to wait, making you be more thoughtful if you're going to do it intelligently, and the lack of culture where other people are shopping and no one expects you to have lots of things, just come together naturally and make you change what you're doing. It just, you don't want to have things, and it makes, it just doesn't apply to everyone. Right. Again, this is not a hard and fast rule, but it's a, it's a thing that everyone I know has experienced. And they just, suddenly you're so much more free. You don't have all these things. And that means things like, oh, I want to travel or I want to switch houses. I'm, I'm renting. I want to move to a new place. Suddenly that's so much easier. It's like we naturally downsize. A lot of people, when they retire, we talked about this recently, they tend to downsize just the nature of retirement. You start to realize, well, there's this thing I just don't need anymore. It's a good time to clean it out. And of course, when you retire is a good moment that you suddenly have potentially time to clean things out that you didn't before. One of the reasons we accumulate things when we're younger and still working is because you, you end up busy with life and you start being like, well, I don't have time to clean all this out. I don't have time to be thoughtful in my purchasing. So I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to buy something to fix it. And that's an, another thing that tends to change when you move to Nicaragua, at least is that you, most people who are making the move to Nicaragua, not because they're moving to Nicaragua, just it, it tends to go together, is that they tend to have a lot more time. Uh, and, and there's lots of reasons for this, but you have time to stop and think and time to consider the things you want to buy and time to do an alternative instead of buying that thing. Generally, and all those just at, come in together. Somebody is coming to Nicaragua and has far less time. Like this is not, again, it's not, a, it's not intrinsic to the nature of Nicaragua that you'll have more time, but the combination of factors that tend to drive people to want to move to a new country often results in having more time, especially when you're coming from a place like the US or Canada or Europe, and you're coming to a laid back place like Nicaragua, one of the factors that drives people to want to come here is the laid back lifestyle that makes you just have more time. And, and, and that, and basically uh, no one has to commute to work who is an expat to whom this applies, right? We're not able to work in country, so we're not commuting to work. Someone is an exception that they're commuting to a volunteer job or they're commuting to an investment that they did or they're whatever. But the, the majority, of people are like, well, I, I may have had all these things I had to do in my previous life. And now that I'm in Nicaragua, I don't, I don't have a car. I don't have to go anywhere. I work from home. If I work at all, maybe I'm retired and all those things contribute to an increase in time and all those, an increase in time generally contributes to an ability to spend more time on shopping or working around buying things and less time just grabbing things. So you, you tend to downsize. And as you do that, you, you find this freedom freedom from the things, you know, we talk about, you know, items own you, of course, freedom from the objects, sure, but also just freedom, freedom to travel, freedom to move apartments, all these things become much easier. And it's just a natural thing that the majority of people who come to Nicaragua end up experiencing just through the combination of factors that tend to come together when you're moving here from someplace like North America. It's hard to really describe and I think almost all of you, if you take the time to do it, and if you really stop and picture your life in Nicaragua as best as you can, you guys see my videos, you have some idea of what things are like. If you put those things together, there's a real opportunity to envision how you may drop off in shopping a lot and, and suddenly it does change how you think about everything. Suddenly, oh, you know what? I can have stuff here in this house and everything I need, I can throw in a suitcase and, and switch to a different house for part of the year. A lot of people snowbird who live here or something like snowbirding, maybe not traditional American style snowbirding where you do uh, cold weather uh, time of year in Florida and warm weather in the north. Here it may be, you know, very different, but still a seasonal or temporary thing where you're bouncing between a couple different locations. And it may be snowbirding where this is replacing Florida in the example. Uh, but suddenly with this type of lifestyle, if you're like me, 
everything can go with you. You're not stuck in a, well, I got to stock everything here and stock everything somewhere else. Furniture, of course. But other things you can be like, you know what? I don't have that much. I don't have to have two copies of everything. I don't have to have an extra computer. I don't have to have a, everything can go into my luggage and move from place to place. And we really found this before we moved to Nicaragua, but not that far off. When we first moved to Spain, we downsized and put everything into luggage and we moved to Europe in luggage. And for years, we lived completely out of luggage. We have expanded since then and we're much more sedentary for the moment. But having done that really made us so much freer. Suddenly we had so much more money to go out to eat, so much more money to rent a car or rent a apartment or do something interesting or travel someplace or hop on a plane or whatever. That freedom was really important, both the financial freedom of spending less gave us more power to do things that we found more valuable with our money for us, but also the freedom that we didn't have these items holding us back that we had to figure out where to store them, how to move them or whatever. It just came together and we have downsized so much. Now I do buy a lot of camera stuff. I love all the stuff I do for the channel and all the different equipment I get to work with. This is one of my passions. I've always been a big fan of cameras and photography and, and videography. So I love doing this stuff and I do, but it's so different. If I lived in the US, I'd be going to the camera stores, trying things out, getting things all the time, constantly buying. Here, I'm really putting in like, okay, this six months, I'm gonna get this one lens. In September, I'm gonna evaluate the GoPro 13. And like, I know that there's these, these milestones throughout the year and I have to think, for months, is this what I, well, but if I didn't buy a GoPro this year, maybe I can get the the X4 from Insta360. Would that be better? We gotta see, you know, that's what I got away. Or is the DJI Pocket 3 the way to go? Is that the thing that I don't have and that's gonna be a better uh, addition to my portfolio than a new GoPro? But my GoPro 9 is really on its last leg and I do need to have three because I, I just need that redundancy. Like I have to consider these things. Right, but because I'm putting in all this time, even with my camera gear, which is the one thing that I do buy a bit of, I'm so much slower in what I buy, so much more thoughtful, and I'm getting so much more value out of every penny that I spend, even though I have more buying power overall because I have a lower cost of living around it. Like it just all comes together to make a really great combination. But the point being, there's a really good chance that when you come to Nicaragua to live, not as a tourist, that you may experience one, a lot less television, but that's not the point, but a ton less shopping and owning of things. And this also contributes to why we say there's a really good chance that if you're coming down and moving and you say, well, I want to put all my stuff in a, in a shipping container and I want to ship it down. I want to have all this stuff. What we often find is that people who move here, once they've had time to experience the owning less lifestyle, very often, not all the time by any stretch, but very often then say, I don't want to own all these things. I don't want my shipping container to come down here. I want some of the things, sure. I don't want all that stuff. It's too much stuff. Then I'm going to have to deal with it. It's going to fill my house. I'm going to have to move it. What if I ever move to another place? Suddenly, and this is where the retirement video that we did a few days ago comes in, or we did a few, and, and people say, you know, when you're, when you're in your 70s, when you're in your 80s, you really worry about moving apartments. It's something you want to avoid. It's one of the things that drives people emotionally to think that owning a house may protect them from things that they're worried about. And absolutely, I understand. But even more so is if you downsize to the point where moving is really trivial, it makes that a lot less scary. Oh, you know what? Everything fits in a few suitcases. I can easily call a neighbor up. They'll help me put everything into the back of a pickup truck, drive me to a new location, set up. No big deal. Still annoying. Still don't want to do it. Still want to avoid it if at all possible. But instead of it being a how am I going to deal with this scenario, it's often a, eh, that's just kind of inconvenient. Even if you're in your 80s, Suddenly it's, this, is, this isn't so bad. I've made a lifestyle choice that makes being able to move really easy. And being able to move easy doesn't have to make you actually move more often. It just can be used to eliminate the fear and trepidation of potentially moving. And sometimes that's all it is, just making the potential not be there. And so, so many people end up here and are like, wait, I don't wanna ship that stuff. Even if it was just teleported here for free, that may not be what I want. And that's a that's a major change, but we find that quite often. So don't be surprised if that happens to you, that so often before people have moved down, all the conversations are, how do I bring my car? How do I ship my stuff? How do I buy all these things? How do I fill my house with trinkets? And I know that when you're doing it, they all seem really important. 
but when it actually you're here and you spend time it starts to be like wow i don't need those things now trust me i still want my antique computers i want to decorate my house with antique computers it's just who i am i'm sorry mostly that's for my wife who's putting up with this but that's one thing that I do want because I collected them over decades and I would like to be able to keep them and I just want them in my cool room in my new house when we build it in our permanent home, right? But that's about it. All my other stuff, I wish it would just vanish other than nostalgic things for my kids. All of it can just go. I don't need it anymore. I don't want to be encumbered by it. And I bet you will find, maybe not to the same extreme, maybe more so, but you will almost certainly experience a drop in desire to own things that will only increase over time. And the lifestyle here will at least make some dent in your, in your thought processes about owning a lot of stuff. It doesn't mean you're going to end up like me. It doesn't mean that you won't want to shop. It doesn't mean that it will affect you, but I would be very surprised if any significant number of my viewers really didn't experience this effect because it's so ubiquitous and so natural when you're here. It just seems to be something that happens to all of us. Thank you for joining me. Like, and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. Of course, don't forget to tune in in the morning if you're watching this on Monday night. If you're watching this on Tuesday morning, rush, rush, rush. Go tune into Channel 8 here in Nicaragua. It's online. You can look it up. I think you can even get to it on YouTube. There's lots of ways, but it's TN8 is what it's called, but it's Channel 8 Nicaragua. And uh, just do, there's a live en vivo uh, stream right on their main page. If I haven't gotten you a link, if you can't find it, that's how you find it. I'm on the morning show, 8 o'clock Mountain, 9 o'clock Central, 10 o'clock Eastern. That makes it 7 o'clock Pacific. I know that's really early for some of you. And uh, it would be great if you tuned in and showed support there for the show. And uh, if you would be so kind as to share this on social media, tell a friend or family member about the show. Get someone addicted to watching us. Get more people into our little relocation and Latin American travel and vlog and and all kinds of lifestyle channel we don't even have I, what is our purpose i don't know if this is just it's a great little community i love having all you guys here along for the ride as i explore life in in my own uh, own way i will see all of you hopefully live at eight o'clock in the morning tomorrow and i'll do my best to pop up four older videos on the screen and it would be fantastic if you would just click on one of those you don't have to watch it just let it play in the background that's cool too all the support you can show is much appreciated